everyone, um, and welcome to my presentation. I'm going to be talking about Jigsaw and the processing library today. What is processing? So processing was originally created to be a software that allowed programmers to create basic sketches or um, graphics and was also used was supposed to be used as a um, teaching tool that would allow be beginning computer programmers to learn computer science within a visual context. Um, but it quickly actually developed into a method for creating professional grade graphics. And you can actually create some very awesome things using processing. So let's go into processing quickly and take a look at a script. So just opening up the processing software that can be downloaded from processing.org. Um, looking at this that opens up, so um, this is where we type our code and we see it's written in, in JavaScript and we can simply run this program by clicking the run button. Let's see what it does. So this is called pattern and we can, so it's an interactive graphic that when we drag our mouse across the screen it draws circles and the size of the circle is um, large or small depending on the speed of our mouse. So pretty cool. Um, we can see that this is done in a fairly short amount of small amount of code and it looks fairly simple. Going back to our slide. Now what is Jigsaw? The jigsaw is going to be a big portion of this presentation. And I was actually fortunate enough to interview Mark Rousseau, who is the creator of Jigsaw. He works at Bryn Mawr. So um, in this interview, and the, the responses from um, a bunch of interview questions that I asked him will actually be present throughout this entire presentation. Um, so in one of the questions, I asked Mark, about um, sort of the reason why Jigsaw even exists. And he said that Jigsaw was also a tool that was supposed to be used, that is going to be used in education. Um, and it specifically is, is special because you can, it's a, visual rep rep it's a visual representation of an executing program. So the way that it's constructed allows the beginner to see how a program is built and then run. Because each block is highlighted as it is executed. And you can visually create a program instead of just typing. So we're going to see this quickly. Here I have my Calico open. And if I want a new Jigsaw script, I simply select the new script and click on Jigsaw, and this pops up. And on the left hand side, we see we have all these tabs which give us, give us all of our different options for what we can have, what we can actually drag and drop and use for our program. So let's say that I want to just define a variable. So I select my variable block and should go in okay so then it will slide right into my program and if I want to edit it I simply select that block go down to the bottom right where the properties of the block are it can be edited select the variable if I want to call it my var great enter if I want to change the expression to 30 great enter and notice how it changes up here and so it, it takes in what you've edited and it might seem like you can't do much with just a few if test blocks and procedure blocks but I have I wrote actually the Fibonacci function that we wrote in class in, in scheme I wrote that using only the four tabs of blocks so let's see how this runs um, we have here a prompt, so as says asks for the nth digit, right? I'll put in five, and we can see we can see the function actually running because it highlights each section. 
and the output is 5, which is correct. Um, so kind of cool the way that you are able to do a lot of the same things you can do in Scheme or Python, you can also do with just these four tabs. Great. So, um, talking about Jigsaw, so why is Jigsaw so unique? And one of the really cool things about Jigsaw is that it integrates with other programming languages um, as part of this Calico platform. So it is able to, it's possible for it to interop interoperate between other languages. So um, if we have a block, like we saw before, and there's a function in it written in Python, it can actually read that function call. So now we're able to, it sort of, it sort of builds a bridge between um, these different language representations and it can help you to understand um, the different, and it's meant to actually help you understand more complex and powerful languages by um, having this flexibility. Great, so now I want to go back to Calico and talk about the processing library. So let's go back to our basic program that just has a variable definition. So let's say I want to actually use processing with my new Jigsaw script. So what I would do is go to Edit, use a library, come down here to Processing, and now let's see, and now I have a bunch of new tabs available to me. Um, and these all look like they're graphics-based tabs, which is what we want. So um, now you can assume and make sense to know that I could drag and drop any of these blocks in here and have them executed um, just like it would be for a basic program when you would be right in making that. And so what I did was I've already prepared a program for us to look at and this funny enough is the same program that we looked at, the same script we look at in processing, it's the pattern um, program that we looked at in processing and it might look a little bit different but it actually runs the same but I did add something to make it a little more, in more interesting I added color to it um, so it's the same thing it just has more color you see we have the same program just randomly generated colors which I thought would be a little more fun which is great so um, we we're able to drag and drop these different blocks that are processing functions and create this program. Um, and all things that are, so let's see if we slow this down a little bit and take a closer look. We can see that only these, it's going to run really slow, the actual graphic is going to run really slow, but um, we can see that we only run through the first of uh, six or six um, functions or six yes function calls in the beginning and then the infinite while loop calls the update and that's a little bit different from the processing JavaScript because in the JavaScript they're actually calling um, the draw function and we don't have that here we just have an infinite loop so this actually if I clicked out of the window won't actually stop the program. I have to stop the program by um, manually selecting the red button. So let's go back to our thing. So a little bit more about Jigsaw. Jigsaw is actually Lexily scoped. It is possible to add continuations in Jigsaw, but it doesn't seem to be the main area of research. And um, Jigsaw can be direct, directly translated into Python, which is another great um, teaching feature. So let's just take our patterns example again. If we go to File, stuck, um, Export as Python, let's just save this as pattern in our Jigsaw presentation. Great. We can see here that we have exactly what we had before, our window, background, and then our update function in Python. Let's make sure that it runs the same way. Yep. Runs just fine. Hit stop. 
Um, and that's a great way for students to learn um, to go from maybe the visual-based language to a more text-based language, and that would help ease the transition. So a little bit about the limitations as of right now of Jigsaw, since it is still um, being updated and improved. There is really no way to add modules and classes at the moment, so Mark is working very diligently to incorporate classes so that the flexibility of Jigsaw will be greater and um, be able to do more with it. Also, um, maximizing the screen, screen utility by packaging blocks, so some way of condensing some of the, the blocks so that you can create more difficult programs because as you can see even a simple program like the patterns program takes up a lot of space. And also um, improving the run speed which is makes sense. Um, and also just making overall adjustments so that Jigsaw is easier to use, maybe adjusting colors or tabs or um, adjusting the way that the blocks are situated so that it's um, more intuitive. So um, that's, what, uh, that's my presentation my project. So if you have any questions, please um, leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them.